Hi, it's Rob from the Prussian Balkan. Today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to paint an Urukai warrior. So the first colour they're going to use is Citadel Mornfang Brown. We use this to do all of his flesh. So you have the thighs, you've got a little bit on the back of his legs, between the top of his boots and the armour straps too. And you've also got his arms and his face. So give them a nice smooth coat of Mornfang Brown. We can carry on with this fella. So next up, we're going to be using Citadel Rhinox Hide. We're going to be using this to do all of the leather parts. So you've got that kind of loincloth beneath the chainmail. You've also got the boots and you've got the gloves too. The Kraken miniatures, these really like the Urukai miniatures. They're not as amazingly detailed as some miniatures, but they are really, really good. I think they're great poses, very fitting for the Urukai. When you've got a mob of them together as well, they look absolutely superb. So, big fan of these ones. Next up, we're using Citadel Lead Belcher. I'm going to use this to do all of the chainmail and also all of the armour plates. So he's got the armour plates on his forearm, both shins and sort of the top of his feet, the helmet, the shoulders, got the chainmail kind of t-shirt going on. You've also got a shield and you want to do that too. I'm going to use some Vallejo Black. Use this to do all of the armour straps and the belt. We've got quite a few little straps knocking about here. There is ones going round the side of the torso. They kind of hang down the side there. You can see the sort of like little vertical just above his hip. That's actually part of his belt when I've been looking at the model closely. I don't, don't think I initially paint that straight away. But you can do the belt and those little vertical parts for it too. You've also got the crisscross of straps across his back as well. Presumably holding up his breastplate. Not to forget the ones on the back of the legs. So straps done. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Dryad Bark. I'm going to use this to do his hair. Now looking at pictures of Orakai on the internet, there's quite a few different hair colours that they have. Also quite a few different shades of skin too. So depending on which way you want to go with it, you can change the skin tone or the hair tone, depending on what you want to have. So I'll go for a dry out bark so it doesn't blend in too much with the armour on this one. We can use different colours to give that a bit more variety. Next up we're going to use Citadel Gore Grunt of Fur. I'm going to use this to shade the skin. Now this does give this quite a nice deep colour. I think it makes the skin look quite nice, quite good and quite similar to the effect that you see on some of them on the miniatures and also a couple in the film too. But prefer using this to the Grax Earth shade that I usually use on Mornfang Brown. So about the finish of the contrast paint does give them a kind of leathery or skin look about them. With that done, we're going to use Citadel Black Templar Contrast. I'm going to use this on all of the armour plates. The reason I like using this rather than null oil on the armour plates is because you want that kind of blackness to the plates but you still want to see the metallic showing through because they're not 100 percent finished they're not painted black it's just that they are or well, they appear to be cast and made or forged but they're not polished or cleaned up or anything like that so you use the black templar contrast that gives them that nice still slightly metallic but kind of dark black look so we're going to use null oil on the chain mail Also going to use it on the areas that we used Rhinox hide to, the leather parts. So there's quite a bit that you can do with this, and you can do that on the hair too. So as you can see, although it's quite a detailed miniature with lots of different parts to it, you're not really using that big a palette of colour. 
it doesn't really take that many layers to get all the bases and shades done now even with just the shades done it does look pretty good using contrasts on the skin and on the armor it does make it stand out a lot more and you get the shade in the recesses and the highlighty bits too but applying color now we've gone back to the Mornfang brown we're going to start highlighting and working on those skin areas They can pick out lots of the details on the skin here. See all the different kind of parts of the muscles on the legs. And if you can't see any of them, just grab up a little picture of the muscle anatomy and then you can use them to kind of roughly tell where the muscles will be. Now we've mixed a little tiny bit of Citadel Word Birders Red to the Mornfang Brown. I'm going to use this as a highlight and this gives that kind of reddish colour that they have. I'm going to add some Ballo Brown to the previous mix and that's just going to lighten that up so that you can do a few little highlights. Now what I'm doing here is kind of the striations that run in the same direction as the muscles. Although there's no detail on the muscles really, you can see where they are and you've got the recesses between them. By doing this it just adds a little bit of detail to those muscles that are showing through. Makes a smoother surface look a bit textured. So with the skin done, we're now going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Avaland Sunset. I'm just going to use this to do the eyes. I'm using an army painter wargamer character brush here. There's one part where you might want to maybe put a tiny spot of liquid, like medium or water. I usually just use water. Just to thin it so you've got that tiny little spot of paint on your brush, just so it doesn't dry out before you get it onto the eyes. Now we're going to use some Vallejo Black to put the spots of the eyes in there. Now same again if you had a tiny little bit of water or medium, whatever you want to use, just to thin that slightly so that you can put that spot in there a little bit easier. If you do make a mistake with any of the spots, you just add that yellow back on and then add the spot again, like so. One grumpy looking Urukai. Now we're going to be using a little bit of Ushabti Bone from Citadel. We're going to use that to do his teeth. I do have quite a few teeth poking out there. Different ones have different numbers in different places. So you can pick out all those and give them a little bit more of the individual look too. Like so. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Lead Belcher. I'm using quite an old brush when I'm doing this part. I'm just going to gently lightly dry brush some of that lead belcher over the armour plate. Now this gives a little bit more of a silver shine to it while keeping the blackness of the contrast. It also picks out the edges of the armour plate so they stand out a little bit more. You can do this over the chainmail as well if you want. Over the sword, I don't tend to do it too much over the chainmail though because it's I like that to be quite matte and dulled down so it's a bit dirty and grimy. I'm going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Stormhost Silver if you want to use the Modeler Chrome you can do. This is just to do a few little highlights on the edges and the ridges of the armour plate. You can do this on all of the armour plates, so like the helmet, the shoulders, the chest, the body, the legs and feet and the shield too. If you want to put a shine down the front edge of that blade as well, you can use the Stormhost Silver as well. You get a slightly too big a splot of it. Use your thumb or something to wipe that away quickly. Like so. You can also carry on do a few little slices and slashes down the armour. Next to the armour we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to put this into the recesses on the armour plates and around some of the kind of concave areas on it.
and also use this on some of the flat parts too. It's mainly just to give it that kind of weathered look because it's not finished or protected. It'd be easily weathered and it would start to oxidize. So you can add a little bit of this just to give it that brownish discoloration that you get on that metal. Moving on to the leather, we're going to go back to Rhinoxide. We're just going to pick out all of the areas of Rhinoxide again, leaving the null oil in the recesses. Now we're going to add some Citadel Balor Brown to the Rhinox side. I'm just going to start highlighting those leather parts. Now because you've done the armour and you've done the skin, when you start doing these leather parts, it really just start to make them stand out and make the miniature start looking great. Really pleased with how this guy turned out at the end. It's the basis for how I'm going to be doing the rest of the uruk -hai, the Isengard force that I'm working on. Going to finally add a little bit more Ballor Brown to the previous mix. I'm just going to do one highlight more, like an edge highlight, on the Rhinox hide areas. So you want to be thinking about where the light's catching it and just highlighting those areas. Like so. I'm going to use some Vallejo Black. We're just going to touch up those straps that we did earlier on. So you've got the straps on his arm, holding his armour and the shield. You've got the same on the back of his legs and you've got his belt and that too. So just give those a straight coat of Vallejo Black or whichever black you're using. By painting the leather straps in black, it does make it stand out against the armour because the armour's now got that slightly more of a shine to it. So it does look metal and it doesn't blend in. Now we're going to use some Vallejo German Grey. If you don't have this, I think Citadel Eschen Grey is pretty similar. I think it's maybe slightly lighter. But if you've got German Grey, you can use that. It will highlight those straps. So you're thinking about where the light is going to catch them. And just painting up those areas. You don't want to do the straps that go right under the arm, you don't want to go all the way under, leave some of that black under there. When you've got the horizontal belt, you want to be thinking about the top of the straps and things like that. And paint up those bits. So final highlight for the belt, we're going to use some Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey. I'm just going to pick out some of the edges and the tops of the straps and things like that with this, just to make those stand out. I'm just going to use a little bit of Citadel Dryad Bark. I'm going to use a Army Painter Wargamer character brush here because we're just going to pick out little individual sections of the hair. When you look at the hair, it is textured and there's like little horizontal lines going across each piece. So I am just picking out each of those little bits that is showing there. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo White. We're just going to paint the white hand of Saruman on the top of his head there. So it's just doing this in a kind of thing in the way the palm would be when you put it on. So you've got that kind of almost reverse G shape and then the fingers poking up there. And we'll also add some little runs to that, but I'm going to do a video of painting those hands on different things. Now we're just going to use a little bit of Vallejo 
model wash and this is the rust you can use the dark rust the light rust whichever one you want and we're just going to put this into the recesses and this will add that slightly orangier tint to where we put the agraxair shade earlier on once that dries that does look as though the metal has weathered a little bit and gives it that rusty orange color by not using too much of it it just gives that hint so that you'll see it when you're walking at it from certain angles and things like that when the light catches it and that is it this is the final finished urukai really pleased with how he turned out now there isn't too many poses when you get the pack but they do all look great and when you've got a load of them together they look so absolutely stunning so really happy with how he turned out and he's a good addition thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content also think about subscribing to some of our other social media link below if you like the channel and you enjoy the content and you'd like to support us our patreon and coffee pages are linked below thanks very much